This is a video to show how to map uh, some tabular data when you have the XY locations inside the table, whether it be a DBase table, a text table, or an Excel spreadsheet. And here we're working in the island of uh, Puerto Rico. And we're going to simply add the tabular data. And we go up here and we use the plus sign. And the tabular data is inside of eBird. So we go to eBird, open that folder. And we have an Excel spreadsheet here. We're going to open that. And we have each of the worksheets. And we bring one in at a time. So let's just grab worksheet one, which is usually the one most people start putting their data in. And if we bring that in, notice how it has changed us from listing by drawing order to listing by source in the upper left corner of the table of contents. And that's because this is a tabular data. It's not spatial yet. If we right click on that layer, name and go down to uh, open excuse me we'll go to open first here's the tabular data uh, this is what it looks like we have different fields here uh, associated with the uh, species name the scientific name and so forth but we also have these two fields which are important ones latitude and longitude which give our location and if you look at these you can see that this is 17.9977427 that's obviously decimal degrees so these are in decimal degree, uh, some sort of decimal degree system. Now, what we want to do is use these fields to map these points so that we can uh, identify all these uh, species locations. And the way we're going to do that is we come back up to the uh, layer and we right click again to get the context menu. But instead of open, we're going to go all the way down and use display XY and bring up that dialog. Now, the display XY dialog move it over just a little bit here. And what it does is it's going to want an X and Y field to display the data. It's going to need to know where in, in the uh, projection it is. And it defaults and starts looking for information and, and names it recognizes and it found longitude. For the Y field it did not find latitude and instead it grabbed year collected. We're, we know that's incorrect so let's set it for latitude. So we're set up for latitude. So we now have longitude for the X. That's your east-west direction. We have latitude for your Y, which is your north-south direction. There is no field or, or Z field or elevation information. And then we come down to the last piece here, and we have a coordinate system of the input. Now this is what it's asking you. What are these coordinates down here in these tables? What do they really mean? What system are they in? Well, you would normally go to your metadata associated with where you got this table from and you'd make sure that you're using the right the right coordinate system by default the dialog reached out and grabbed the the data frame information up here and put it in place well it's not the same coordinate system as the data frame so in order to correct what's shown here we need to use the edit button and for the edit button we get another dialog and that allows us to select a coordinate system and we're going to go ahead and select one this these data sets came from a GPS locations uh, more, more than likely they're probably in WGS 84 1984 um, they could be in another coordinate system coming out of a GPS unit you 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 also again have to know what the uh, what the unit was recording in and what it was uh, downloading in so we're going to go to geographic and say yes they were in the in the normal format world we go into and down at the bottom of world there is WGS 1984 projection we're going to grab that apply it notice it gets it put in the dialog here we can say okay it updates it here and we're all set and we hit okay now you will more than likely almost always get an error that there's no object ID and that's fine because these this was not spatial data to begin with and they're just telling us we're not going to be able to export this, but they do remind us that you can export that we can export it to a shape file, and that's what we're going to do. So we say okay, it plots the information out there. Let me just change the color a little bit to uh, maybe make it show up a little better, and we can also a little graphic anomaly here, make them a little bigger. There, there's our points, and these are the X Y locations that we brought in for different species. They look relatively normal. We don't see any way out in the um, ocean. 
things like that they seem to fall where you'd expect them to fall that's just an initial check you would have to if you really are suspicious of your coordinate system that you use and whether it's correct you need to check it against uh, some known locations all right so we now have what is called an event layer inside of our ArcGIS map document this layer only exists inside the map document if you want to use it at another in another document or a later time it's a good idea to export this out and what that will do is create either a shape file or a geodatabase feature class so we right click on the event theme and we say and we come down to in the context menu to data and in the context menu under data there's an export option pick that and inside this dialog it allows you to export all features or a selected set it also asks you about using this layers source or the data frame so if we wanted to project it to the data frame at this time we could instead let's just use the data the data layer source and we give it a name and an output location so we go click here and we're going to put it inside eBird and we're going to call it uh, um, eBird underscore WGS 1984 to show what projection we're in and we can identify whether it's a shapefile or a personal database or, a, or an SDE feature class either way and you, and you select the one and say yes and it writes it out there and we'll add it into the table of contents if you want so there they are they fell on the same spot and at this stage now I would suggest you can go ahead and, and remove that ev that event theme layer, and you could probably even remove your original table while you're at it. No sense leaving too much in that you don't need, and we'll switch back to the drawing order. And that's how you can take tabular data with a known x y location in some um, some projection, find out what the projection is, bring it in, and map it with your other data, and the, and essentially create a new spatially referenced geo database feature class or shapefile.